Sandbox is really the next generation of DSPs. We came about because our founders were just really frustrated that the, the current sort of slew of companies didn't really meet the needs either of brands or of broadcasters and other really important media owners in this space. And so there's a few really core points of difference. You, you touched on pricing or, already in, that, in the question. And that's something we really pride ourselves on. I think where we've seen a lot of success and, and traction is with big media owners, big broadcasters, who have these huge communities of, of logged in audiences across multiple devices. They know who their customers are and they want to be able to reach them perhaps in a, in a smarter way that they're maybe not able to do through a simple ad server. So a lot of them will use our technology to buy their own supply effectively against perhaps different optimization criteria or different criteria. They might even buy their own audiences outside of their own supply perhaps, but in order to achieve metrics that matter to them like, and their customers like GRPs. So being able to offer their customers the ability to reach a particular set of GRPs at scale um, across both a combination of linear connected TV and, and OTT. And then the, the difference on, on price is, is very, very interesting. I think the original generation of programmatic technologies were built for um, the internet. They were built, built for, for cheap media, not for premium quality um, media that we're seeing now starting to be traded programmatically. And so rather than charge a percentage of the price, a percentage of the, the media spend that the other platforms are charging, we operate purely on, a, on an enterprise SaaS model, a fixed monthly fee based on the volume of transactions that we're processing for you. Um, for me, it, it's a much fairer model. It doesn't cost us any more to buy a, a really expensive ad as it does to buy a, a cheap ad. And so why should our customers pay more and, and be sort of penalized for accessing better quality media? So tell us about progress on a commercial level here in, in Europe. I think um, in Europe there's a lot of um, advanced um, uh, work being driven by um, the large national broadcasters um, in each of the different countries. And it's, it's really interesting to see what even some of the smaller markets like Belgium are driving, as well as bigger markets like France and, um, and the UK. I think if you went back a few years, you'd see companies like Sky really sort of trailblazing. But now there are, there are many more people sort of um, who've caught up and uh, who are doing very, very interesting things in this space. We're seeing a lot of broadcasters who have logged in audiences who are maybe accessing content in different environments, say on, on their mobile phones through, through, um, through broadcasters' apps and so on. And so seeing people innovating with how are they able to reach the users that they know that belong to that broadcaster, but perhaps not only on, a, on an actual TV set, but also on, within the, the broadcasting environments, but on other devices, so on tablets or on, or on mobile phones. And tell us about your progress commercially in Europe at Beeswax. Um, I think it's, it's really interesting. We have a lot of forward-thinking brands in Europe and a lot of people who are fed up of, um, of those um, sort of slightly opaque programmatic practices. And so we've seen um, people really leaning into uh, to partner with us um, who really care about um, their businesses, who want to grow their businesses, work with a fairer, more transparent partner. And so, uh, yeah, we've been going, <laughs> growing great guns over here as well as in the US.